Hello and welcome to the third lecture on this course on chemical process design. This lecture will continue to examine certain aspects of multiphase reactors, this time ones that involve solids and liquids. We will also discuss thermal effects in chemical reactors and also talk a bit about the numerical modelling of chemical reactors. We'll start though by thinking about more innovative solutions to problems and in particular how to deal with solid liquid reactions when you've got far more solid than you have liquid. So go fetch that cup of tea, go and sit down and let's think about how we deal with another interesting problem. Now the context of this problem is a plant that I used to work on a long time ago now and that plant made hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen fluoride is ghastly stuff. The plant operators used to call it an abomination of nature and it has a habit of eating absolutely anything in sight. It also reacts violently with water so it has to be kept anhydrous and is also neurotoxic as well because it is affinity for calcium ions and calcium ions are one of the main signaling mechanisms in your synapses within your nerves. So hydrogen fluoride has to be approached with a good degree of respect and with a great deal of care and application of safety. So hydrogen fluoride is produced by taking calcium fluoride, which is a mineral, fluorospar, by grinding that up into a powder that's just a little bit coarser than flour, and then by mixing it incredibly thoroughly with sulfuric acid. Now the reaction doesn't take place at room temperature, so that initial mixing process can happen at fairly cold conditions, room temperature-ish, ambient. Considering this plant was on Merseyside, it was ambient was pretty chilly most of the time. And then when you heat this mixture up, you get calcium sulfate and hydrogen fluoride. Now the way this particular process worked also employed the use of fuming sulfuric acid or oleum, and this was to try and dehydrate the system. So if there's any water kicking about, you don't want the HF reacting with water. So you remove the water by adding oleum, and oleum will preferentially react with the water to form more sulfuric acid, which is absolutely great. So you end up with anhydrous hydrogen fluoride. Now, if you think about the paste that's formed in this process, you've got to mix about 50 or 60% by volume of this calcium fluoride powder with sulfuric acid. And if any of you go and sit next year's rheology course, you'll see this is a very concentrated suspension, very, very highly viscous. Basically think of something like bread dough. So how on earth do you process bread dough? You can't flow it down a pipe. You can't really squeeze it through anything. It's not quite a rock, although after baking this stuff, it looks like a rock. So what you have is an industrial kneading machine to start with, made out of Hastel oil or Inconel to make sure it doesn't dissolve over time with any HF. But you mechanically knead calcium fluoride and sulfuric acid and oleum together. And then you put it into a very special type of reactor that I'll show you in a minute. The reactor operates between four and 500 degrees C, so basically it's directly heated by gas burners, and it operates at sub-atmospheric pressure. Now it operates at sub-atmospheric pressure because the last thing you want is a leak of HF from the reactor into the outside world. That would be catastrophic. So if there is ever a reactor leak, what happens is, is air leaks in, not product leaking out. So we've got a pretty special type of reactor that's required to do this. So let's have a look at a photograph of the plant. And I, I can take a trip down memory lane and remember those very cold nights that I used to work night shift on this plant, handing tools to operators, because I was basically no more than an apprentice at the time. But by doing that, you learn a heck of a lot about how plants work. So circled in red there is the hydrogen fluoride plant at the Runcon site on Merseyside. And we'll see on the right hand side, it's got quite a lot of um, structural steel work. That's where a lot of the final dehydration columns for HF are, and a lot of the feed preparation for the calcium fluoride. In between that and the left hand side, you can see hopefully that along the top, you've got a great big duct piece of duct work that is for the flue gas for the uh, gas burners. And underneath that piece of duct work, you've got a very long horizontal kind of cylinder. And we'll look at that in a little more detail in a second, because that is the key reactor in this process. At the left hand side, you've got all the processing equipment that deals with the solid rocks of calcium sulfate that come out of the chemical reactor. 
they're ground up by hammer mills and it's that that ground up powder is conveyed by pneumatic conveyors into storage silo so let's zoom in a little bit and have a look at what sort of reactor we're talking about and we're talking about a rotary kiln reactor you'll commonly find these in cement processing plants for example but also on hydrogen fluoride plants the hydrogen fluoride reactor is made of an incredibly expensive nickel alloy um, it's hastaloy hastaloy um, or in canal b and these reactors are rotated the entire time so if you'd like it looks like a massive tumble dryer you put in your bread dough that mixture of sulfuric acid and calcium fluoride at one end made by the industrial kneader that's pre-mixed that powder and that acid very very thoroughly and it sort of drops into the reactor as a lump of dough like material and then you've got this reactor turning maybe three or four revolutions a minute and this dough will just tumble and tumble and tumble while it's heated to four to five hundred degrees c and over residence time of a couple of hours that chemical reaction will take place hf will be evolved it's extracted in gas extraction systems and of course we're keeping everything at sub-atmospheric pressure just in case there is any leak in any of the seals because hf loves eating anything in its way including reactor seals and then as that calcium fluoride reacts it becomes calcium sulfate and tumbles and tumbles and bakes and bakes and tumbles and bakes until it drops out of the far end of the reactor as basically a rock of calcium sulfate or gypsum and then that rock is then ground up by hammer mills and the resulting powder pneumatically conveyed off to storage so rotary kiln reactors are commonly used where you have very very high solid concentrations in multi-phase reactors and a thing to note with rotary kiln reactors is you need to keep them constantly rotating because if you lose power and they stall because they're heated usually to very high temperature they can warp and the last thing that you want in one of these kiln based plants is your reactor warping under its own self weight especially if it happens to be made of a high nickel alloy that would effectively write the plant off because the capital cost of replacement of one of these reactors would effectively render the plant uneconomically viable